today we start with the with the in international session that involves with you and uh, Europe Hello. and uh, um, uh, East Gang too. Um, it's interesting that you uh, talk about smart grid not for uh, it's not a lux you say a luxury a luxury choice it's but it's a, a, a need. need it's a need so the same uh, uh, the same technology could answer to to different uh, requirements requirements different challenges too yes uh, it's it's really a big challenge in uh, in india and uh, i know that could be that it's uh, uh, early to talk about but also with smart grid we need to improve also smart meter yes Isn't it? are you are you are you work about yes uh, i have given you a copy of uh, smart grid vision and roadmap for india which was released by government of india in last year september so this is a 15 year transformation of entire indian power sector into smart grids it's a very ambitious program which could be anywhere from 40 to 50 billion dollar work involved. So, smart metering is one of the basic building blocks of smart grid program and the government of India in the smart grid vision and road map has advised all the distribution utilities which are owned by state governments and very few states it is owned by private sector to go in for smart metering in a phased manner starting with high value consumers, commercial and industrial consumers to all three phase consumers to all consumers. Since the number, our numbers are very high, we already have about 200 million electricity consumers meaning 200 million meters and by that and I also mentioned we still have about 79 million households which are not connected to the grid. So, by the time in 15 years we complete the smart metering or smart grid implementation, there will be more than 300 million electricity consumers. So, we are talking about a market of 300 million smart meters in this 15 to 18 or 20 years depending on what speed each of the state would go in for this program. So, uh, you know in uh, EU some of the big countries have still not EU has a mandate of smart metering by 2018, some of the countries yet to decide. So, in India also you should look at it as EU because we are 29 different states ruled by 29 uh, different combinations of political parties. So, uh, some of them may go on a fast track, some of them may go slow and resource constraint is also there. So, what I mean to say that yes smart metering is a big market in India. And looking at this 300 million, out of 300 million, I am sure about more than 200 million will be residential consumers, single phase residential consumers who consume very little el electricity. But we have to in the smart metering regain to have the full benefit of smart grid uh, from all the technology deployed, we would like even to take that single phase low value consumers to the smart metering regain so that we will have a fine network of or, or uh, of the distribution network. We have a real time visibility of distribution network and we can s monitor and control power flow in real time. So, we are uh, advocating even the low the poorest of poor household also to have a smart meter and to facilitate that government of India had set up a committee uh, a year and a half ago to formulate functional requirement and technical specifications for smart meter for a low cost smart meter. So, that committee has already submitted its report. So, we are targeting a smart meter which will have all the functionalities rich functionalities which are necessary and also which can be remotely connect disconnected and uh, reconnected at something around 20 to 30 dollar uh, target price. We are hopeful that it will come down to that prices because of the numbers. If you look at that, the way the the, the phone, cellular phone, as uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, when India and China we started with cell phone, a, a handset used to cost thousand dollar. Today, fifty dollar, you get the best of <laughs> a handset. In. So just because the volume came, so commercialization of many of the smart grid technologies uh, will be 
made faster because of the big markets in India and China and such big volumes will drive the prices down and innovation uh, at a high pace. So, we are very, very hopeful that uh, smart metering in India uh, will be a, a success and uh, we will do it on a fast track in next 10 to 15 years. Do you, do you think that uh, could be uh, um, strategic for you to, to uh, match your expertise with other countries? I know that it's really different, your state <laughs> of, uh, of the grid, but... No, we, we are working with all the technology providers from all around the world. We are working with all the standardization organizations from around the world. We are in the forefront of uh, working groups, relevant working groups like uh, IEC TC57, uh, the PC118, the, 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 the committees which are writing standards on smart grid and also on renewable TC8. All these uh, Indian experts are there in the forefront of writing standards. IEEE, all the relevant uh, standards for smart grid, we are there. We are members with SGIP and uh, Global Smart Grid Federation, all international bodies. We are very much convinced that the technology level, India, China, uh, Europe, America, same technologies. But the need for that technology, why, how do we leverage that or what are the business drivers for deploying that technology? That may be different because we have bigger challenges. We have a better business case. Our return on investment will be for much faster than in Western Europe or in North America because of the challenges which I told you. Eh? We have to pro leverage these technologies to give access to electricity to about 400 million people. And we have to improve the s quality of supply to about 800 million people, no more power cuts, eh? no more voltage stabilizer. Eh? This kind of things immediately gives you and we have a huge transmission distribution losses. In last 10 years, we brought the losses down at distribution level from 36 plus percentage below to 26 percentage. The 10 percentage of uh, the, the technic uh, the, the, the losses, AT and C losses, we call it aggregate technical and commercial losses at the distribution level, it translates to 2-3 billion dollar per year of saving. And in order to do that, mainly we did that through technology intervention, the 10 percentage reduction in AT and C losses achieved through technology intervention and, and strengthening of the electrical network, which we have not spent more than 10 billion dollar. But today India consumes about uh, 950 trillion watt hours TWH. So, if you take or, or billion units, uh, better way to call it is uh, about 950 billion units of which 10 percentage is about 95 billion units which you save even at 2 rupees or 3 rupees average price, it is about 2 and a half billion dollar per year savings from that investment. So, from 26 if we are able to bring it down to 15, we know we may have to invest maybe 20 billion, 30 billion, but the savings are going to pay for itself in short time. So, we have a better business case. And Talking about uh, billion dollar, mm. uh, what is the business model that you think for the smart grid implementation? Because it is only a mm, implementation by government or it is only a implementation by how? Listen, uh, at the distribution level, mm, as I said, most of the distribution companies are state government owned and we stand to gain a huge benefit from efficiency gains. Any technology intervention, we have live examples in front of us. We privatized distribution business in Delhi in 2002. Next five years, the private companies invested in network, electrical network strengthening and a set of IT and automation solutions and huge improvement in efficiency, reduction in equipment failure rate, reduction in T and D losses. That has paid for itself. 18 months to 30 months is the return on investment in uh, Delhi example. Same with select pockets in many states. So, we are convinced that uh, the, the, the AT and C loss reduction, the equipment failure rate reduction, these things are going to and power purchase. If we are able to manage peak power, the 
utilities have to buy expensive power during peak time to they buy it at 10 rupees and sell it at 3 rupees. So, they have a loss. If they are able to manage that through technology, reduce the load during peak time, shift some of the load automatically which can be shifted to non peak hours, the they will have huge savings. So, we are actually doing now 14 pilot projects that DPR, the detailed project report of those 14 pilot projects, most of them estimated return on investment in 36 months. These projects, uh, most of them will be completed someday middle of next year to end of 2015. That 36 is months is the Guinness of projects. <laughs> no, no, project will be project will be completed in anything from 12 to 18 months from now. And immediately after that, one quarter, two quarter, we will be able to see whether the assumptions which is in the detailed project report are correct or not. And that is going to give us a, a technology selection guideline. This 14 projects will give us what technology will work, what would be should be our last mile connectivity eh, options, which is the most cost effective uh, products and solutions we should go for and what gives us the fastest return on investment. So, two years down the line, we will have much better clarity on business models and uh, business case as well as uh, technologies to be selected for implementation of smart grid.